Okay. See this see this mobile phone? See this mobile phone was created by a mind or by chance? Was it by a mind? Was it by a mind or by chance? Ah, right. Now this universe, this earth, is more complex than the mobile phone. Is 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 the Okay. Okay, we're going to the sky. Listen, listen, bro. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, that's a good point. He says that evolution. All right, let, 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 let's go for it. Let's go. That's a message. Don't go, don't go, don't go. I have two shows. Let's just take on this argument, bro. He said that evolution came from bacteria. Listen to this. Scholars, biologists, 1980 multiplied bacteria in the hope that the bacteria would change into something. They did 40,000 generations of bacteria, which is equal to a million years in human life. And guess what? Bacteria is still bacteria. So you can't use bacteria to prove evolution. Okay? Any more evidence for evolution? Do you believe in evolution, bro? Any reasons why you believe in creation? And not evolution? Because of design. Because of design. That's, it's a designer. It's got to be a designer who designed this world. Now, number one, let me ask you another question. Have you ever lied? Has anybody ever lied? Has anybody ever lied? You shall not steal. Has anybody stolen? Now, when you meet God, He judges you on the law. Don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery. Honor your father and mother. Honor the Sabbath day. Don't use the Lord's name in vain. And we become guilty before God. But God has to judge. If I and my friend here got drunk and we went in a car and knocked a little boy over when we're drunk in the car and the law courts catch us, there's going to be consequences for breaking the law. And when we break the law of God, there are consequences. We get judged by God. But guess what? God in his love has sorted your problem out of guilt. There was a king and the king passed the law that if you steal, you will have your eyes plucked out, both eyes plucked out. So the king made this law, if you steal, you'll have your eyes plucked out. Well, his son, the prince, was found stealing. And the jailer was about to pluck his eyes out, and the king heard it and said, came down to the jail and said, don't pluck my son's eyes out, take my eyes. And the king gave his eyes to save his son. Now you and I are going to go under the judgment of God and we'll go to hell, that's like our eyes plucked out. But Jesus came down and died on a cross, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus had his eyes plucked out for you and me. In other words, he suffered for us and died for us. When he was on the cross, he was dying for you. He loved you and gave his life for you, to rescue you. He died out of love for you, out of sacrifice for you. Let me ask you something. If you had a baby boy who's five, if you had a baby girl who's six, would you give your baby boy and baby girl and sacrifice them for 10 crackheads who just want to take crack and deal in crack? Would you give your baby boy and baby son, baby girl, would you sacrifice them to save 10 drug dealers? Would you do that? Would you give your son and your daughter, little girl, little boy, would you give them to save 10 murderers who have murdered people? God the Father gave his son, not for one murderer, not for one drug dealer, he gave his son for the whole world. He gave his son for you. Everything that you've done wrong, the son was still given for you. You said, where's God? There he is, his love for you on the cross. 
that amazing love, that amazing love for you was there on the cross. Now if I give you 500 pounds on your birthday, and I'm your friend, would you take it? If I give you 500 quid on your birthday, as your best mate, would you take it? God has given you more than 500 pounds, he's given you eternal life in Jesus. He's given you eternal life in Jesus, but you have to take it, you have to, as you open the letter with the money in, You've got to open your heart. That's the letter. You've got to open your heart. The envelope. And if you open your heart and receive Jesus, you receive the love of God. It'll set you free. It'll give you joy. It'll give you peace. It'll give you forgiveness. It'll set you free from your addiction. You say, well, no. Jay, Jay, wait, wait, wait. Wait, Jay. Oh, no, 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 no. Jay. Wait a minute, Jay. Jay, I've got issues. Jay, I've got issues. God don't want to know me because I've got issues, Jay. Listen, he's got issues and I've got issues. God loves him and God loves me and God loves you. He said, no, no, Jay, my issues are big. I've got big issues. Okay, are your issues bigger than the woman at the well? She had five guys, five husbands. She liked a bit of grumpy. She loved grumpy. And she didn't only have five husbands. She had another guy on the side. She had six blokes. <laughs> She loved her company. She had major issues. But guess what? Jesus still loved her. Jesus still loved her. Jesus still died for her. He still went to the cross for her. He still gave his life for her. She didn't know Greek. She didn't know Hebrew. But she went back to her town and she said, Come. Come and see a man that's told me everything that I ever knew. And you don't, you don't have to know the Bible inside and out. You don't have to know Hebrew and Greek. You don't have to come to church, you just have to have a simple faith and believe that yes, I am a sinner and yes, I need Jesus. And once you know Jesus, it's simple faith in him and belief in him. He said, Jay, nah, I want science. Jay, I want science. I've, I've got to have science, Jay. I don't need nothing unless I have it in science. You go to your girlfriend and tell her, you don't believe that she loves you unless she takes a scientific test. You go to your boyfriend and say, I don't believe you love me. I want you to take a scientific test. You probably get a slap. Science cannot bottle love. Love is greater than science. You cannot analyze the love of God scientifically, it is beyond science. The love of God, the Son of God came down and started the prophet. That is greater than rationalism, it's greater than science. We can give you rationalism, we can give you evidence, but ultimately the love of God is greater than our minds. And the Son of God loved you and died for you. He died for your issues. He said, Jay, what if I come and believe? It's going to be boring, man. I'm going to go to church. It's going to be boring. It ain't going to be boring. Do you get bored of your girlfriend? Do you get bored of sex? Do you ever go, I'm bored of sex? It's boring. Sex is boring. Do you ever get bored of sex? Do you ever get bored of love? Do you ever think, oh, I'm bored of my girlfriend's love? I'm bored of my girlfriend's love. I'm bored of my boyfriend's love. You don't get bored. The love of God is not boring. Knowing God's love is not boring. It's beautiful. It's exciting. He sets you free from drugs. He sets you free from porn. He sets you free from alcoholism. He sets you free from depression. He sets you free from all the issues that keep bringing you down. The negativity of someone who poured negativity in your mind, your dad. When I was a boy, I had a boyfriend and my mum used to say to me when I was five, you're an idiot. And the boyfriend shaved my head off and urinated on me as a little boy. And when I grew up, I always felt I was nothing, I was useless. Because of that act of that boyfriend when I was five and he urinated on me. But guess what? God loved me, God died for me. God cares for me. I'm not that little boy, nothing. I'm a human being with dignity. Why? Because Christ loved me and died for me. And whatever negativity has been poured into your mind, 
There is a positivity that God wants to pour in your mind and it's called the gospel, the good news, that God loves you, that God cares for you, that God came and died on the cross, Jesus Christ. So please, I've been here 10 years and I've preached for 10 years in Manchester. I'm going to Africa soon. I'm going to get married and I'll be in Africa. I won't be here much longer. I won't be here much longer. I've been preaching on the streets for 10 years in Manchester. I've been kicked. I've been punched. I've been all sorts of abuse upon me. But I've still been here. Why? Because I care about you. What we're telling you is the truth. What these guys are telling you is the truth. We're telling you the truth. Everything else you're hearing in the media and politicians are right. It's not truth. It's fake news. We're telling you the truth. What are we doing today? Am I preaching homophobia today? Has anybody seen me preach homophobia? Has anybody seen me preach Islamophobia? What have you heard me preach? I'll tell you what you've heard me preach. Jesus, 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 Jesus can set you free. That's what you've heard today. You've heard a positive message about the Lord Jesus Christ. The King of Kings and Lord of Kings. Who loved you and died for you. And he's calling you to believe him. He's calling you home. So come home. Come home to him and come and know his love. Come and know that grace is free. You don't have to put on a suit. You don't have to be religious. Just come as you are. He said, Jay, Jay, I've got major, major issues. Well, bring them to the Lord and say, Lord, I've got issues. He'll deal with your issues. He said, Jay, I've not got much faith. Come to him and say, Lord, I've not got much faith. He'll give you faith. He said, Jay, I've got doubts. I've got intellectual questions. Well, come and say, Lord, I've got doubts. Come to him and he'll answer your prayer. Come to him and he'll help you. Our beliefs are tested in life. If you're an atheist and you believe in atheism, your atheism will be tested. Life will test your atheism. Now, let me test your atheism right now. Here's your atheism. You might not like what I'm going to say, but what I'm going to say is logical, but it's the logical conclusion. Frederick Nietzsche, the German philosopher, said, when God is dead, morality and meaning is dead from an atheist. So, if there is no God, life's a bitch and then you die. That's the conclusion of your atheism. You might say, no, no, Jay, there's meaning to my life. Yeah, it's your meaning, it's not objective meaning. You're the one who bangs on the drum. We want objective scientific knowledge. Well, you give me objective scientific knowledge for the meaning of life. You can't do it as an atheist. There's no objectivity. You lose it all. If there is no God, there is no objective meaning to life. That's why the great atheist, Frederick Nietzsche, Jean-Paul Sartre, and all these great atheists, they were honest and they said, you know what? Once we've abandoned God, there is no meaning to life. It's only the modern atheists that are not as clever or, 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 or as sharp as Chakra and Nietzsche who come to the logical conclusion of atheism. There is no meaning to this, no God. And if there's a God, there's a meaning to history, there's a meaning to your life, there's a meaning to you. And you were made for two things, to love God and love your neighbor. And we're fallen, this world is not perfect, that's why there's wars and there's terrible things happening. It's happening because of man's wars. All the mess that you see, all the wars, all the evil, who's it coming from? When we see wars, when we see people being beheaded, when we see all these evil things happening in the world, where's it coming from? The heart of man. The heart of man. And it's the heart of man that needs to be redeemed. It's the heart of man that needs to be changed. It's the heart of man that needs to be born again by the Holy Spirit. And it's the heart of man. Political correctness does not deal with the heart. Political correctness takes away free speech and brainwashes people with neo marxist identity politics. And that's people. Whether you like it or not, it doesn't deal with the heart of man. Jesus dealt with the heart and said, you must be born again. Born again means the Spirit of God comes in your heart and changes you. And you become a new creature in Christ. Come and know the love of God. My friend, 
You're not just a person in flesh, there's a spirit inside you. You have a soul. And when you die, that soul lives on. You're not just the physical thing of sex, food and whatever. Your body is more than physical. There is a soul to your body. You have a soul. That's why you crave for meaning. That's why you crave for love. That's why you crave for something more than just sex, drugs and rock and roll. You'd want more in your life. And it is because you have a soul that you have a God-shaped vacuum that has to be filled and it will never be filled until you meet your maker, the creator your God who loved you and came and died for you. When you meet your God, then that God-shaped vacuum will be filled. You say, Jay, I read Foucault, I read Kant, I read Hume, I read Plato, I read Guess what? I read Derrida. I, I'm clever. I read Derrida. I read post-colonial studies, Jay. Listen, you can read post-colonial studies. You can read your Derrida. You can read your Foucault. But I've been reading this book for 30 years. And this book is more profound than Foucault, more profound than Marxists, more profound than any philosopher that has ever lived in history. You bring me Richard Dawkins here and get his book, The God Delusion. You know God Delusion? It's a bestseller. Now you get me Christopher Hitchens, put him here, and put his book, God is Not Great. That's a bestseller. And then get me Sam Harris with his book, End of Day. Three great atheists, three great books. I'll show you how great the Bible is compared to Hitchens, Dawkins, and Sam Harris' books. Are you ready? Take Richard Dawkins' book, The God Delusion. How many prostitutes, drug addicts, has his book changed their life? How many? How many prostitutes and drug addicts have had their life changed by this book? In the last year, year, just one year. Thousands upon thousands have had their lives changed for the better because of his book. His book hasn't changed one. Hasn't changed one. Hitching with his God is not great. How many people has that changed? And what about Sam Harris? How many people has that changed? This book is spiritual dynamite. It's power packed. If you read this book, it is dynamite and it will change your life. You say, no Jay, I've got evidence against this book. Let me tell you this. I'll show you how powerful this book is. Are you ready for how powerful this book is? Are you ready? In 1960, Chairman Mao had the day of burning. A Chairman Mao in China had the day of burning and he had all the Bibles burnt in China. In 1960, Chairman Mao had all the Bibles burnt in China. He killed people who had Bibles. How many Christians are in China today? <clears throat> 70 million. With all this burning, he could not destroy the Bible. Voltaire, the French philosopher said, when he dies, there'll be no Bibles in France or Europe. Voltaire, the philosopher said, when he dies, there'll be no Bibles in France or Europe. When he died, his house was turned into a Bible printing press. You cannot destroy the Bible. It's dynamite. And when political correctness is gone, and it will go, it's only a fad. When your political correctness is gone, this will shine like gold. And will still be here, changing lives and doing the work of salvation. I'm bringing them to the Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. So God bless you.